Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So we talked about uh, last night uh, distribution, right? Uh, if you will go back to last night's video, you kind of get a good uh, sense of what we were talking about. Again, big run uh, in the market, especially let's talk about the Qs, especially individually. Uh, big, big run. We reclaimed the 20-day moving average, which was obviously a big deal. And now we're resting, right? We talked about this on the video yesterday. Now we are resting. Uh, like we said, there's gonna be weakness in the tape. What we saw the majority of uh, the majority of the day, we saw some strength in the tape at the beginning uh, of the opening. And the moral of the story is nobody had a rational stake into what's going on. But this is again why we have technical analysis that we don't need to guess what happens next. And if you guys remember going to the weekend video. Uh, the big number here was that three, you know, that 306, excuse me, that three, what was it? That 302 level, right? That 302 level on the close. This, that, that represented uh, the 20 day moving average. And why the 20 day moving average is important. Again, like uh, we talked about in previous videos, this is the last time we had this pretty big run here. Uh, and probably the more, more, almost exclusively the biggest run we've had in this last five months of downward bias since we've been uh, below the 50 day moving average. The only difference between uh, this run that started in January, February, March 16th, uh, and the one that we are still to be determined here is that run was linear. It was literally one after another, after another, after another, until it finally gassed out at the top of the range here. Here's a little bit differently because the, the fact that we had such a big run from the bottom of the range of 282. So by the time we got to 302, by the time we closed uh, on Friday, right, uh, at 309 and a quarter, remember we were seven points away from the bottom of the channel. So any retrace back to rising support where it got reclaimed, it was gonna be normal. It was gonna be absolutely normal and that was gonna cause a distribution effect. Not enough fear uh, to take the market down and not enough, uh, not enough emphasis, right? Not enough exaggeration for average true ranges to expand because the market is tired and here we are. It's exactly how the day played out today. Um, you know, a couple of bounces, one really good pivot uh, on Amazon at the open. We'll get to that in a second. But more important, it did kind of play out that way. And the, the longer, you know, the longer that we sit above this 20 day moving average that we reclaimed last Friday, the higher probability that we will start the next leg up. Now there's a flip side to this, right? Remember guys, we, we don't speak with uh, rose colored glasses, okay? We, we, talk, uh, we, we talk facts, we talk data, uh, and we talk reality, okay? And so there's a reality to this again. So the market, you know, in the last couple of days looks very, very tired and that's normal. Uh, the tape today, if you look both on the spies and you look both on the Qs, they both came down and tested major support. You can see here by the Qs, right? It came right back down to the 20 day support and they bounced. The spies came down to the five day support, right? Five day slash, right? You see this right here? Five day slash uh, 20 day support and bounce. Now the question is, what happens next? And the, the, here's the good part. Distribution, like I said last night in the video, it probably lasts for about four days. Uh, today was day, what was today? Today was day, what, what day are we in? Today was day what, two? Two or three, right? I think today was day two. Today is day two. Uh, manageable, tradable, you have to be very, very specific, know exactly what you want, specifically on bounces, uh, sneaky channels, this and the third, but the point is it was definitely tradable, but if you looked for some meaningful move one way or another. For example, if you try to short weakness into the rising uh, support, whether it's a 20 day moving average uh, on both uh, on both the Qs and the spies and you short it and you don't know that demand is there, you got run over uh, in the afternoon. Uh, but more important is now we don't have to guess. So the next logical step is what happens next, right? We know the top of the area here, right? The top of the chat, chat here is, you know, you're talking about roughly around the 312, 313 level. But what happens if it doesn't do that, right? What happens if the market completely gasses out 
and starts losing pivotal levels back, right? We're not, we're not wishing one way or another. Again, I'd like to see this market have a little bit of legs. I kind of enjoyed myself for the last two, three days. There's some pretty good moves to the upside. Let's, you know, let's roll with this for a couple, you know, let's roll with this for a little while. Let's see how high it goes. But at the same time, I understand where the big picture is. And the big picture still continues to be, we are still rallying in a bear market. How do you know we're in the bear market? We're still below the 50 day moving average. So the narrative here hasn't changed. So, you know, like, like we said, uh, when we first reclaimed the 20 day, here we went on a three week run. So far, we've been on a three day pregnant pause above the 20 day moving average. The question is how high can we extend? But the other question is what happens if we stop, right? What happens if we give back the bottom of the range? We have to know what our specific levels are. So here are the specific levels. I, again, there's certain parts of technical analysis that I, I don't believe if you're a new trader, I, I get it, you wanna be right. You wanna show everybody how smart you are, that you belong in this, that, and the third. But technical analysis is not subjective. Above demand is bullish. Below supply, right? Below supply is bearish. So here's the over under, right? Everybody see this rising support here on the five, right? These are the Qs. You see this rising support? If the Qs lose 302 on the close, there's nothing to talk about, guys, right? There's literally nothing to talk about. If we give back, uh, if we close below this rising support, which will be probably above, will be probably around 303 tomorrow on the rise. If we close below 303 on a close, that's no good. We're gonna start re we're gonna start going right back down. However, in a, in a really good proactive way, and again, this is why we talk about to be prepared on both sides of the market. If we can get a washout, right? And it's very, very important to understand. If we can get a washout, right? They open the market lower, they wash out somewhere between this 300 and, and close above this 303 area, you'll know they trapped the shorts, they held the top of the range once again, and then it will just be a matter of time, they'll start squeezing back. So I, I think tomorrow, you know, I, I don't wanna put more emphasis on it, there has to be. I, I still think tomorrow you have to be super duper patient in kind of your approach, just because how sensitive uh, this area is. Remember, overall picture, we're still in a bear market. So it's very, very important to understand the dynamics. And we started seeing a lot of names today, you know, really fizzle out. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, but dramatic moves from their highs back to the lows. And that's not an accident, right? If, if the market was super duper good, and this is kind of where digesting super bullish gains, then you turn around and say, you know what? I want to give the market two, three, four days to kind of get a sea legs together. When you're sitting in the middle of the spin cycle with five months underneath the 50 day moving average for the most part you can't allow the market to give you that much rope so you have to be conscious of those levels same thing on the spies right let's actually yeah let's use the spies so if you notice the spies the low today was 406 why was that important right look look where the low is right 406 that's the 20 day moving average if the spies start losing 406 that's not good guys again that's not subjective if, if, the, if we close tomorrow below 406 Again, you have to rethink the narrative. You have to rethink the sentiment and kind of rethink your approach because again, prices are going to depreciate just because again, we'll be back underneath supply. So yeah, I, I think tomorrow we kind of want to watch things. Um, you know, we, we want to watch both sides. We want to see price action take place uh, on those levels again because the longer they test those levels, and still survive and reclaim and build, the higher probability that this 20 day break will not be a fluke, right? It will not be just a couple of day rental on the bullish space, or maybe it'll, it'll turn into something more. Again, to be determined, I, you know, I don't know. This is why we always talk about, you know, we're not trying to predict the future, what happens six months from now, okay? We don't know what happens when Amazon splits, I believe on Thursday night into Friday, we don't know, right? Your, your guess is, well, at $125, $123, it's a steal. It's not a steal. It's the same price, the same valuation. Just the price starts, the price, <laughs> the price is cheaper, right? There's nothing to do about valuation. $120 is still, you know, it's still a $2,400 stock. So the most important part of the next couple of days is watch the price action, attack those levels. They're either going to sustain or lose those levels. That's not something every day you see. It's not something usually uh, play out every single day. But if that starts to happen, then you have to start look at some price action below that. And if you look at the retailers, and this is kind of, we'll, we'll kind of give you some ideas for tomorrow. If you look at some of the retailers, they've already lost the key levels, right? Raw store, it blew up on earnings, just like a lot of levels, right? 
you know, check this out. You know, this thing already lost the five-day moving average. If raw star tomorrow, you know, confirms down, again, it's not going to make a difference what the rest of the NASDAQ 100 does. If raw star here confirms this channel down, I mean, look how much room it has to its earnings low. Look at Costco, right? Same thing with Costco. Check this out. Same thing. Costco closed right at the five-day moving average. Again, it's the shortest term sentiment. If it loses this channel tomorrow, again, this thing could get hit as well. So there, there's definitely levels in different parts of the market that we can we could definitely appreciate and take advantage of while the markets the etfs the broad based indexes are trying to figure themselves out um and again like you know we've been watching tesla and there's been some great opportunities in tesla both long and short in the last couple of weeks but you know and you know and who's to say right who's to say it, you know tesla has to break above this channel here why can't tesla lose the five-day moving average and go right back down we did see some aggressive put buying. We did see some some weekly 700s. We saw some deep out of the money uh, 650s, even some 500s, you know, down the road. So th there's nothing there's nothing set in stone in this market. And this is why, again, I say no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're trading, is at least be prepared for tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week, Thursday, Friday, next Thursday, next Boomerang Day, next Groundhog's Day. We don't know, right? There's too many days. But we do have control of price action. We do have control of data in front of us, what's going to happen for the next day. And that's the most important part. So again, really quickly review. Cues are watching that 303 on the close. Any close above 303, again, is deemed bullish until it's not. On the spies, any close below uh, 406 is a big, big red flag until it, it until it stops defending that level like it defended it perfectly, it'll be fine. So those are the levels. Again, no matter how you're trading, make sure you're adjusting to your uh, to your reality. Again, when the market broke the 50 day moving average be, uh, for the first time around and I made the, the whole video and say, hey, this is the first close below the 50 day moving average. Make sure your cards, make sure your house is in order. It's going to be too late three months from now. Yada, yada, yada. It's too late. So let's talk about the, the pivots for today. Again, the market kind of played out. Uh, the market kind of played out uh, just like we talked about distribution up and down, up and down. But again, if you're prepared, if you are prepared for the day, uh, you're going to be fine. And that's the most important part, both long and short. Uh, yesterday, so I missed that 130 million point rally on Amazon. Today, knock on wood, everything worked out perfectly. Uh, 2446 for experienced traders needs to build for a move to the 2480s. This was seamless and this was beautiful, beautiful. Amazon has been just an absolute monster. So here is the pivot right here. Here is the whole pivot right here. Uh, this 2445 area, 2446 area, and just exploded. You know, at one point it went through the 2480s, went to 2503, and then obviously came back in. Again, there's a lot of anticipation. Hey, I'm excited. I, I'm curious to see what the stock is going to look like uh, after it splits. Hey, between this and Google, hey, who knows? Maybe we have a whole uh, different world to watch. Uh, Qualcomm 143 needs to build. It stopped at 4390. Uh, Airbnb needs to build 124. Never got there. VERU 1350. Never got there. Uh, Netflix, nice little move on Netflix. Uh, 200 needs to build. Here is Netflix. Right here is Netflix. Took out 200 and went right to supply. Right. We talked about uh, 202. We talked about 202.70s. It stopped right at 202.70s. Again, this is where technical sellers meet emotional buyers and vice versa when you flip uh, the chart around. Again, you have to know uh, where your channels are. Shop, not a big move, went up about five bucks. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA never got up there. Uh, here's the, you know, here, yeah, perfect. Here's a per absolutely perfect move. Like I say in beta all the time, uh, you just need one. Uh, here comes, you know, here comes uh, uh, Netflix 202.70s next measure potential. It stopped at 202.74. Uh, you know, here's the bounce, right? Here's in bounce uh, five day 303 again, which which it didn't get there. Uh, for all you guys, uh, for all you guys who took the bounce uh, off the spies, here's the five day bounce. It reclaimed the 408 and it, kind of, it closed nicely. Here's the you know, here's the bounce on spies. Uh, off that 408 level, right? It closed at 409.50. He's actually got to like 411 and change before a little bit of a sell off into the close. But yeah, we're, we're kind of set up here. In, in a, gun. a lot of times during your career, you're going to be very, very decisive, right? It's going to be a very, very clean picture. When you're going through distribution, a lot of times you have to trade less, but watch more, right? Um, you know, think more and react less. It's one of those processes, one of those uh, unwritten rules of trading that it's probably not going to show up in the scoreboard. 
but it's like, again, when you collect as much data as possible, at some point, it's going to help you not hurt you. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Let's see if we can get a definitive line in the sand tomorrow. Long, short, let's see what happens. And the most important part is stay in business. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.